Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to have church? Are we ready to have church? Let's go. Let's go. Today's word is called Jesus can do both. For my God can do it all. Now, this is not a word that, that, that pastors and other religions are still struggling with the Trinity because they still don't believe that God can be the Father and the Son and the Word all at the same time. <laughs> they're, they're struggling with that in this house. They're struggling with that with this word of the Trinity. That's why you have pastors that are arguing. When John 1 and 14 said Jesus was the Word made in flesh, Jesus was our blueprint. He was our example. Jesus was our model. He was our teacher. He was the way, the truth, and the light. Yeah, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah, yeah. was able to do what man couldn't do. Jesus was able to go where man couldn't go. Jesus could get his heart broke, but could forgive. Some of us still struggle with that. Jesus could cry when you died, but he could resurrect you back. We weren't able to do that like that. I mean, Jesus was able to do things. Jesus could be betrayed and then wash the feet of the person who was going to betray him. Jesus could get tempted by the devil and not fall short. We still slip on that one right there. Come on now. We come on. And I want to tell y'all something. Pastor taught me something so good that what God said and what Jesus taught us for us today. But there were some things in this Bible that is true, but it was for that time. So you hear Peter was married, but you never heard anything about Peter's wife going with him. Because at that time, a woman knew her place. But Jesus knew his place. Women walk with Jesus. <laughs> he could do both. See, Jesus knew something that men still don't know today. The devil didn't possess a woman because a woman wasn't worthless. You hear that old saying, what he say, uh, the devil don't want what he already got. He wouldn't have possessed women if he didn't think that she couldn't preach, that she couldn't be a pastor, <laughs> that she couldn't teach, you know. So while men are still trying to put a shortage on a woman, God ain't never had it. And Jesus knew because he could do both for my God, could do it all. I want to tell you today, we're going to go in Luke 8 is where we're going to be. And we're going to Luke 8. We're going to do 40 through 48. Then we're going to do 22 through 25, all in 8. And then we're going to do 49 through 56. Don't look at me like I'm crazy. You stroll more on your phone than this reading. They don't got y'all doing right here. You more on your phone than this reading. Huh? I got you some scriptures. Again, Luke 8, 40 through 48. Then we're going to come to 22 to 25. And then we're going to go 49 through 56. And let us read. It says, when Jesus arrived, the crowd welcomed him, for they were expecting him. Just then, a man named Jairus came. He was the leader of a synagogue, and he fell down to Jesus' feet and pleaded with him to come to his house, because he had an only daughter about 12 years old, and she was dying. Now, I want to stop right there and explain who Jairus was. It said he was a synagogue leader. Jairus, Nicodemus, and Joseph Diamathian had something in common. Not only were they leaders of the council and Pharisees that had their beliefs, they all had friends that didn't like Jesus. Well, now. Well, now. <laughs> now let me ask you, so you ever had friends that didn't like your other friends? Come on, come on, come on. Don't play with me. Husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends. You ever had somebody that didn't like your spouse? They invited you, but wouldn't invite them? It get real when we're talking about church. Have you ever had friends that didn't like your church? Come on, bro. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this. You don't want to talk to me today. You want to play with me today. I want to talk to you. Do you got friends that don't like the church that you belong to? Is what I'm talking about. Because see, I'm telling you, Joseph the Alpha, Matthew, and Nicodemus, they couldn't publicly represent Jesus. Joseph was the one who took Jesus down off the cross after he died. Not while he was alive. Nicodemus creeped with the hood on the middle of the night. Yo, G. Let me holler at you. It's something about what you're talking about, I believe. See, people, the, more, the biggest problem they had is they could not stand that Jesus' knowledge exceeded their understanding. People well, can't stand when you know more than them. I don't know what it is about that, but it goes all the way back to them. They did not like that. You know more than them, and they don't like that. So there was a problem in the house, but they had to sneak. They had to sneak and serve them, but J. Iris had a problem. J. Iris' daughter was dying. His daughter's dying. Burn what y'all talking about. I don't care who's seen. This was the problem with altar call. You sit there worrying about who's seen you. But this man's daughter died. It don't matter who's seen me no more. It don't matter who's seen me no more. Because my daughter is dying. And so what's happening here in Isaiah 45 and 23, it said, every knee shall bow. Today is J.R.'s day. 12 years ago, Minister Dillard, a.k.a. Doc, had his day. 
So I was waiting on the sky to crack open. I said, that's where everybody gonna bow. But no, 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 no. Every knee gonna bow. Some of y'all, if you like me, my knee been hit the ground. It's already dropped down to the ground. Jairus' daughter was sick and he knew it. And he knew nobody, even though he was able to lead these people. Even the people that he led and the people that didn't like him, they couldn't do nothing about it. And what it said that Jairus was a ruler. I read that it was a ruler. Then I read again that it was a leader. So I said, okay, why am I reading these two different things? I need to, I need to look this up. And it said a ruler is someone who gives orders. A leader is someone who stands by his fellows and bears the difficulties with him. Now, let me check y'all out. Let me tell y'all something. Haiti going to war, I don't bear the difficulties with him. I feel sorry. Africa got kids dying. I don't bear the difficulties with them, but I do feel sorry. Russia, Ukraine is at war. I don't bear the difficulties, but I feel sorry. But this is why Jesus was the ultimate leader, because Jesus can bear the difficulties of those people that we don't know. <laughs> oh, and the disciples, when he died on the cross, he didn't die for the disciples who loved him. He died for us. You got cancer, Jesus can bear the difficulties with you. You're going through a bad relationship. Jesus can bear the difficulties with you. You sick. Jesus is bearing the difficulties with you. Say he'll never leave you nor forsake you. I don't know what's going on. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So you got everybody got it all cool. They want to be rude. They want to point fingers, but they don't want to suffer. You got to know how to suffer if you want to leave somebody. You got to know how to suffer if you want to leave somebody. Oh, boy. And it's no point of you trying to be the leader if you don't know how to suffer. And as we go on, we continue to read. Said he fell down to his feet, so we know his knee had already went to the ground because his one and only daughter was sick. While he was going, the crowds was nearly crushing him. They were nearly crushing him. A woman suffering from bleeding for 12 years had spent all her money on the doctors, yet she couldn't be healed. She approached him from behind. Keep in mind, it was from behind. And she touched the end of his robe. Instantly, the bleeding stopped. Who touched me, Jesus said. Who touched me? Someone touched me, Jesus said. I know because the power came from me. But Jesus, Peter said, while they all denied it, Peter said, Master, everybody touching you, man. What do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. But he said, the power went out of me when somebody touched me. I stopped right there and I said, and I, I, I couldn't think of the pool pit channel stories. For years, I didn't go to church. But I remember when the church used to be packed. I remember on Easter when the church was packed. I remember all that. So I said, all these people was doing like this, touching Jesus. But did he feel anything? Everybody ain't dead. Where are all them people at? These houses are declining with people. Well, where were they? See, they were touching for something they wanted. She was touching for something she needed. Yeah. Uh, you was touching for a car. Jesus didn't feel that. You was touching for a new relationship. He didn't feel that. Uh, Jesus don't feel all that. He said, somebody touched me. Something went out of me. And what I liked about it, when Jesus died on the cross, he gave us the power to heal with our hands. With our hands. This woman didn't even touch a piece of Jesus' body. It says she touched some clothing and got healed. Oh, that's some power right there. That's some power right there. And it said, he said, he touched me. And she said, the power went out of me. When a woman saw she was discovered, she came trembling and she fell down before him. There's another knee that went to the ground. In the presence of the people, she declared the reason she had touched him. She told him, told him all about how sick she was, all that, and how she was instantly healed. And he said to her, your faith, has saved you. Go in peace. Now, I want y'all to come with me real quick to 22, 822. Come on. The subtitle says, Wind and Waves Obey Jesus. And it says, One day, he and the disciples got into the boat and he told them, He said, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they went out. And as they were sailing, Jesus fell asleep. Then a fierce windstorm came down on the lake and they became swamped. Now, when I looked up the Hebrew Greek word for swamp, that means filled to the rim. The boat is filled to the rim. Your troubles is getting hot. It's getting real thick up in here. I mean, Jesus, I know getting well, you, the water's um, the water past your head. I know you feel this, God. It said it's getting swamped in danger. 
And then it said that came, so it had came on the line. I looked up the word came and it said to draw me a spirit. Don't just come to church. That ain't going to work for you, baby. You got to draw near spiritually. Don't just pray. That ain't going to work for you, baby. You got to draw near spiritually. And it don't work when you're in here. You got to do it out there. Mm. And it said, it said, they came and they woke him up saying, Master, Master, we're going to die. Then he got up to rebuke the raging wind. So they ceased. And there was a calm. And he said to them, Where's your faith? I like the translation where it says, peace be still, ye with little faith. Because if you don't be still, you ain't going to have no peace. <laughs> if you don't be still in this mind, you ain't going to have no peace. If you keep thinking about what happened back in the day, you ain't going to have no peace. If you keep denying God's power in your life, you ain't going to have no peace. So, even though he told the wind, sometimes you need to be still. And then he said, ye with little faith, no wait for me. Let's come back over to this woman. He told this woman, because of your faith, you are healed. Now, I want to tell y'all something. Let me make sure I read this right. When a woman had her time of the month, but under the Mosaic law, she had to be set apart for seven days. And it was also considered a sin. She was considered unclean when she had her time. This woman had an issue for 12 years. Now, let me write something down to you. For 12 years, she ain't had no church. She couldn't go. <laughs> she couldn't go. So for 12 years, she didn't she ain't know Jesus. She heard of him. But Jesus told her, because of your faith, you are healed. But these men be with Jesus every day. They've been watching him do miracles, and they still don't got the faith of a woman that ain't been to church every day. So we get it, we get it twisted. When they go to church, they're good people. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean a lot. That don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing they go to no church every day. What is that called to mean? If they're not growing near spiritually. Yeah, yeah. This woman had an issue. She had an issue. And it said an issue was a vital or unsettled matter. There was a dispute between two or more parties. Woo! You better think the issue is COVID. You got it, but anybody come in contact with you has got a problem. <laughs> you got addictions and bad habits. But I'm going to tell you something. Issues are even worse when you were raised that way. Uh, don't talk to me. You ain't got to. When you were raised that way and you got these issues, don't you remember them things that happened to you when you was a kid that you ain't over yet? It's still an issue. And I want to tell y'all something. An uh, issue is here because of the fall of man. And the only way you're going to get rid of it is when you talk to the son of man. <laughs> but I went to church, Pastor. I still got my issue. But I prayed, dog. I still got my issue. There's a problem that people in church has a problem. A place that we have a problem going. Well, I went to church. It can't be that. Where's the place? Is? Steve, the minister did where's the place? The mirror. You won't look in the mirror and take responsibility for your issue. You keep blaming everybody else for your issue. So you can't, and until God knows that you're real about your issue, ain't no healing your issue. What's the point? You got an issue. This woman had an issue for 12 years. She was abandoned. Alone, depressed, spent all her money, yet she had more faith than the disciples had. Wow. Hit Christ is alive. Wow. Your issue, uh, are you tired of having that issue? Wow. You ain't tired yet? It's crazy that you're having the same issue with different people, but you still don't think it's you. <laughs> <laughs> and the Christians come to church hoping that God will bless them for money, but they don't want to change. I'm going to say it again. Christians come to church hoping God will bless them with money, but they don't want to change. Mm. Mm. We want to do it again. So I repeat that one. Because you seem to want all this abundance and all this blessing, but you don't want to change. Do I need to tell you what a leader means? Do you don't want to suffer, but you think God's going to bless you? I mean, come on. It's a big thing here we're talking about here. It's a lot to have this pressure. To be sitting here suffering the way they were suffering with these issues. One thing I loved about this woman was why I told y'all keep in mind that she came from behind. See, our problem is we get in God's way. That's why we're not in his will. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Oh, boy, 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 boy. We want to get in his way, and 
and wonder why we're not in his will. Oh my goodness. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then, then you know, the other thing is this lady, she told her instantly that she was healed because she cut ties with her past. Wow. We'll get delivered, but we won't cut ties with, with our past. This yeah. is a problem. I'm still thinking the way I am. What's that over that they say? Uh, I'm gonna leave. I used to say I'm gonna leave North Carolina. I'm going somewhere else. They say you're gonna be waiting on you when you get there. <laughs> I don't know where you think you're going. You you already there waiting on you because you ain't changed. <laughs> you're gonna be waiting on you when you get there. So woo! And as you sit back and you realize, now that I've come to God about my issues, now it's time to persevere. Abraham waited a hundred years. How long are you gonna wait? The disciples, the lady had 12 years of issues. The disciples ain't go 12 minutes before they were screaming together. Yeah. David got anointed a job and then got sent back out in the field to work. He got anointed to be king. And then they said, Oh, y'all, boy, get on back out there in there, y'all, and go back to work. You're the king and you got to go back out here and work because you got the person built. It, it takes, you still got some, it don't just, it don't just always do like that right there. And Noah had to build what he had never seen for something that had never happened. But God wouldn't take the tools out of his hand. I believe that churches worldwide, we keep opening up the doors, hoping that the members will come. And when they don't come, we get discouraged, but God won't take the tools out of our hands. We got to keep on building. You got to keep on building. The relationship ain't really going the way I want to, but you got to keep on building. They ain't giving me the job I want, but I got to keep on building. I mean, I'm trying to take these tools out of my hand, but God won't remove the tools. I got to keep on building. Because I got an issue. I'm going to ask you, have you ever lost, those, lost some bread because you had an issue? Mm -mm. I don't have some people out of my life with my issues. Lost some friends over some issues. This woman had an issue for 12 years. 12 years she had this issue. And as God is beginning to read, keeps on going, it goes back over here to the disciples and it says, Master, Master, don't you care if we live or die? Master, don't you care if we live or we die? On August 26, 2005, Louisiana, and Mississippi entered into a state of emergency. There was a storm called Hurricane Katrina that was coming. Hurricane Katrina was the third deadliest storm in American history, costing over $160 billion in damage. The boat is rocking, Jesus. Don't you care whether we live or we die? In this particular storm, over 1,800 people lost their lives. Now, let me tell you all a little about New Orleans. New Orleans is a tourist place. It's crazy that people from all over the world came to New Orleans, yet 80% of the people that lived in New Orleans was poor. And they sat below sea level. The only thing that stopped the water from flooding in New Orleans was the thing called the levees. If you ever came to our church before we got these vents, because we come down a hill, every time it rained, it would flood in front of our door. That's the whole city of New Orleans. It floods every time it rains. This is bad. There's a storm coming, and the only thing that keeps the water from flooding these people were from a hurricane is the levees. Well, here's the problem. The levees were built to hold back a level three, category three storm. Hurricane Katrina is a category five. Jesus, I know you see this boat rocking. I know you see this boat rocking, Jesus. Come on, Lord. I know you see this boat. It's a category of five coming. They said 1.2 million people evacuated, 100,000 remained, and 10,000 went into the Superdome. And the reason they couldn't evacuate is because they were either poor or they had health issues. Jesus, as the disciples would say, I know you see this boat rocking. The rain is coming. It's getting bad. The wind is coming. And it's flooding because they sit below sea level. It's already starting to happen. That's right. That's right. 
Now everything is already bad as it is. The problem will happen. Those levees can't hold back the water. The water is flooding, raging in the waters. Jesus, do you not care whether we live or die? Jesus, do you not care whether we live or whether we die? The flood is coming now. You're seeing cars washed away. Trees ripped up from the ground. Homes ripped up from the ground with people in them. 1,800 people lost their lives. Jesus, I know you see this right now. I know you see this. Do you care whether we live or die? Nurses got a hard decision to make. The power is out. Do we leave these people who need 24-hour attendance? Or do we go home to our family? 154 died in hospitals and nurses' homes. Jesus, I know you see this boat rocking, man. It's getting real. The water's on you. I know you see this. There was a man that was in the house holding on as the water busts through the door. He grabbed his mother in a wheelchair, and his mama said, you're going to have to let me go. You can't hold both of us. If you don't let me go, both of us are going to die. Mama slipped through his hands, and she went out through the ocean. She was amongst the 705 people that are still missing today. Jesus, I know you see this boat rocking. I know you see this. You can't be sleeping through all of this. Have you ever been in your life sitting around the things were happening to you and you were just sitting there wondering, Jesus, did you not see what's going on in me? I know you hear this doctor telling me I ain't going to survive. I know you see my children. I know you see COVID killing all these people. I know you see that earthquake. I know you see that tsunami. I know you see Russia and Ukraine. I know you see Afro Jesus. The boat is rocking. 10,000 people went to the Superdome, and all of a sudden, the flood was even worse. Came crashing in there. The top of the building was roofing, was ripping off, and where the people were supposed to be safe at. Now they got to evacuate from the safe place. Jesus, I know you see this boat. It's rocking. The men said, once they heard that the levees broke while they were in jail, the security guards threw the key and said, y'all alone, y'all alone. Wow. They were unlocking the door while other men were floating. Wow. Jesus, I, I know you see this boat rocking. Lord, 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 Lord. The Superdome has to get evacuated. The nursing home said they were throwing the sheet over some of the bodies that were still floating on the water. And to make all matters even more worse, the respond to help these people took five days. Those who survived the storm didn't survive the wait. Five days they left them out there. Jesus, I know you see this boat rocking. Then when they said they called out the National Guard, well, they should have been called the National Guard, you would think. But the National Guard didn't just come because of the disaster. They came because women and children were being raped. Jesus, I know you see this boat rocking. 1,800 people are dead. Jesus, 1,800. And then when we go back to the story, back to the Bible, while Jesus was speaking, someone from the synagogue leader's home came and told him, your daughter's dead. Don't bother the teacher anymore. Jesus said, have faith. She is not dead. I just told y'all 1,800 people was dead, but who said Jesus said they was dead? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I told you 1,800, but what did Jesus said, Jesus did not say that 1,800 people were dead. He said, those who come to me, those who believe in me, everybody ain't dead. We see a disaster happening, but everybody ain't dead. Everybody ain't home. Oh, we, we were praying yesterday. I said, I know it's hard to hear. It's hard to hear when you hear people dying disastrously. But Jesus said, if you really know what I did, that's why I got on that cross for you. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody wasn't going to die old age. I knew y'all were going to start killing each other. I knew the little kids would join games. I knew COVID was coming. I knew slavery would be here all over again. Six million black people would die on a boat. I knew this stuff was going to happen. And Jesus said, that's why I got on the cross for you. So as Jesus went to the house, 
went to Jairus' house, the people were there. They were, they were there, and, and Jesus, he asked him, he said, don't be afraid, only believe she will be saved. After he came to his house, he met no one in there except Peter, John, and James, and the child's mother and father. Child's mother and father. And everyone was crying and mourning for her. But he said, stop crying. She's not dead. She's just asleep. They laughed at him. They mocked Jesus. They made fun of Jesus. Remember when you said comedians was making fun of the church? Look on the TikTok videos. People still mock Jesus. They mock the way you praise. They, they mock the way you speak in tongues. They mock you to this day. They mock Jesus. He's right from their face. So why are we surprised that they do it? Yeah. They mock Jesus. Jesus had everyone leave. Colossians 4, 5, and 6 said, be wise on how you act towards those who have no Christian faith. Wow. Sometimes you suffer them because you got all these people around who don't know how to pray, but you keep talking to them about spiritual things and they're only fleshly. You're not going to survive with people who are only, they can't understand your Jesus, so why do you keep talking to them about Jesus? You getting frustrated. This marriage ain't working. It wasn't supposed to work. He don't know Jesus. You keep going to church. He don't go. You telling him about something so those Pharisees understand him. He's like these Pharisees. He's mad. It's just like Jesus with the microwave and they were cooking on the pot. Well, what's wrong with the microwave? I don't know, but I don't like it. They just don't like the fact that something goes past their understanding. People don't like what they don't understand. We got this misconstruction. When you come to church, all of a sudden you got wings and you fly. And people feel belittled because you go to church. They feel belittled because you know Jesus. But you are trying to tell them, you can know him too. There's no secret to this. This is simple. And these people are going the wrong way. So you have to be careful around the people that really don't have that faith in what you say, what you do. Because you got to win the room. He told those people to get out of the room. You can't touch, you can't lay hands around non believers. You need people in that room that really believe that we can take our hands to this day, right now, and heal somebody. And the problem is, you're surrounded by people that don't even want to come to church, let alone believe you can lay hands. To them, that's hoodoo or some kind of magic trick when you know it's a spiritual and it was written. Jesus said we could do every bit of what it is that we're doing, but they yeah. don't understand that. So you got to, you really need to get to a point where grandma used to say, pull a long hammer spoon on. You need to start feeding some of these people from a long hammer spoon. Some of your BFFs and your best friends and your road dogs and your stomach, your homie, your rollie don't need to be your homie, your stomach, your rollie because they ain't walking the walk that you walking. You want to straighten now and they want to go over here a little bit. They want to go here and then they want to keep talking about what y'all used to do. That ain't going to work. I don't need to know what I used to do. I know what God is having me do. I don't need to know. I know when my boat is rocking, all I got to do is look at Jesus peacefully, but I can relax too. It didn't say he wasn't with me. I can see you if Jesus is sleeping in my boat. He's here, but he's still here. When he died, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So he sent them people about their room. Because them people didn't believe. They laughing and making fun of Jesus. You praying, you telling people that God's going to do this for you, and they want to keep telling you what the doctor said. Jesus is going to hear me, but the doctor said, I didn't ask you what the doctor said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get a job. If you know you know you're an ex con I ain't asked what's our ex con Jesus told me I was going to do this. What are you talking about? They don't have that. Jesus can do all faith. They want to limit him with stuff. You know, and keep coming to you with these limitations. There is no limitations with God. I didn't walk out of a jail cell to be limited. I'm not going to be told what I can and can't do. God said I can do it and I'm going to do it. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what your story was or what his story is. I know who I belong to. Yeah. I go to my job all the time and they say stuff to me. I'm going to let you do this. And I'll be looking at them like, but they, they don't never stop me from doing this. Then I hit me. I'm like, they don't serve God. Yeah. That was the simple secret. It doesn't make me better than them. It just makes me, I got a little bit more sense than they got right now. You better go to Jesus because nobody stops me from doing what thus the Lord said I can do. Oh, this woman, when she had her issue, it was so many reasons that we have our issues that we need to relax. Because Jesus, when you think it's a dying moment, he comes in. They laugh. They knew she was dead, see? They knew, but Jesus knew something different. They knew, but he knew something different. The Pharisees knew, but he knew something different. The Pharisees could spit the Bible without reading, without even looking down. They could quote scriptures. 
Oh, you know how many people can quote scriptures? It's a hard thing. You ask pastor, you come into the room with people, and as soon as you say minister or deacon or reverend, they get an attitude. Well, John 3.16 said, I ain't asked you all that crap. Now I can I thought we were gonna celebrate this. You know, it comes, it becomes a jealousy thing. You know, versus a love thing, it becomes a jealousy thing. And they scared that you don't know more than what they know. That's what those Pharisees had a problem with. Jesus knew something they didn't know, and they couldn't figure it out. They couldn't find nothing wrong with it. Pilate said, what did he do? Kill him. What did he do? Assassinate him. What did he do? They had no answer for what he did. Nothing. So the issue started with them, and it ended up with everybody else. Y'all got to remember, the devil didn't put Jesus on the cross. Well, now. Well, now. Can I share another secret with you? Yeah. The people in the streets ain't the one who get mad when you go to Christ. Well, now. When you start becoming something in Christ, it's not the people on the streets that's mad. That's it's the same people who laugh, which is it's the same people who say crucify you. And we still get shocked by that, but it happened to Jesus. Mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So they laughed and they mocked him. And he took the girl by the hand. He said, child, get up. And it says, Talitha Kareem, which means child, get up. And she got up at once. Then gave orders to give us something to eat. And he told the parents, don't tell nobody else what I've done. The, the thing of the day is that Jesus can do both. But my God can do it all. There's no limitation on who Jesus is. Jesus is God. Don't sit here and tell me that Moses can take a stick and split the Red Sea, but Jesus can't be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> he can do both. And where I'm going today is some of you are sitting in this room wondering, can he fix this? Some of y'all are sitting in this room today wondering, can he fix this? Do you believe that somebody can lay hands and heal you? See, that lady, he didn't say it was because she was fine, girl. He didn't say it because she was tall, black, white. He said, your faith has healed you. It has saved you is what he said in this translation. So some of y'all dying because you ain't got no faith. Things you're supposed to have in life, you ain't going to get because you ain't got no faith. Well, it's not the devil, it's you. Where is your faith? Yeah, yeah. Do you believe he can change your issue? Do you believe he can heal you right where you are at right now? Do you believe he can tell you, get up? And you can get up, or you're going to keep laying there. The issues that we have, God, I want to say something before I do anything else. I'm going to close you with something. A doctor told this alcoholic, if you don't stop drinking, you're going to die. Then he turned around and the next day and said, well, you know what? You've been drinking so long, you probably still going to die. You know, you didn't see that. But Jesus said, Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me today. Come Y'all don't want to talk to me today. Uh -huh. Jesus said, all oh, who confess and believe that I am God, you will live. You will live. Man can't do both. Only God can do both. God can do it all. Don't limitate your Jesus. Don't limitate your Jesus. I want to tell y'all something. J. Iris knew dropped. He was no longer worried about who had to say what, who thought what about him. You got some issues right now. You ain't going to tell nobody. You ain't supposed to tell nobody. It's between you and God. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But I want to ask the church, and I want to ask everybody something in here. When you touch Jesus, does he feel anything? Does he feel anything when you touch him? I want to ask y'all something. I'm going to call an altar call, but it's not because I want an altar call. It's because somebody has issues and they really don't believe like the disciples didn't believe. You need that woman with the issue faith. Do you have that woman with the issue faith? Do you let me get the song? Do you have it? Come on, we're sitting in here right now looking around, knowing good and well you're going to go home with the issue. So you ashamed of your issue? I don't even know your issue. I know I'm tired. I know I'm tired of my issue. You've got to be tired of yours. Has yours been 12 minutes or has it been 12 years? Or has it been 40 years? 
How long have you been suffering with this issue that you still don't want to come up here and talk to Jesus about? Listen, it ain't even an out loud sermon. Tell him what you're going through. You got an issue. And if you ain't got an issue, you're dead. You are going to make it. So it might not be but this big, but hold that baby in your arms, stand up and hold that baby for two more hours. That baby's going to get heavy. That's your issue. You can't keep carrying your issue. So how long are you, you going to let the doctor tell you either way you're going to die and start hearing Jesus say you're going to live? Play the song for me, B. Well, I want somebody, anybody. And if nobody comes, it's fine because I can't fix your issue. You're not going to come up here for me. Not at all. Not at all. But that woman knew. For 12 years, I went to every doctor, every lawyer, every judge. She it didn't even say whether she had children or anything. Never would have made it. It didn't even say whether she had children or nothing. But what we know is they have to be set apart for seven days. Can you imagine going a whole this long, not being able to talk to nobody? Seven days, bad enough. I was in jail. Seven days, I like lost my mind. You know, <laughs> seven. She had twelve years of this. She can't come around. She didn't get to come to your cookouts, your baby's graduation. She ain't gonna come to Thanksgiving. She had Thanksgiving for twelve years. Christmas, twelve years. Everything you had going on in your life that y'all do every day with it, she couldn't do it for twelve years with her issue. And that woman got to a place where she said, "Okay, I don't heard about somebody." <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk about Dr. this and Dr. that and Dr. this, but that ain't working no more. I don't heard about somebody. There are people that only Jesus can suffer what you suffer. That's why I know you're tired. Is it, is it, are you tired of losing people? Are you tired of your finances being gone? Are you tired of visiting doctors? Jesus Christ, are you tired? Are you tired of them telling you no? Are you tired of keeping it real with people that don't keep it real back? You don't gave them everything and they left you with nothing. Are you tired? It became an issue. Come on, I'm going to talk to somebody because you got an issue that you ain't going to make it without Jesus. Stephen can't do it for you. Kilgo can't do it for you. Pastor Hand can't do it for you. But you got an issue that Jesus is telling you right now. Because I know I would have lost my mind. So if you know you got an issue, come on up here. Come on. Don't be scared. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. I'm tired. You're tired. You're tired. You're tired. I'm tired of being tired. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of going through this. I'm tired of hurting like this. I'm tired of bleeding like this. I'm tired of getting up every week having to go through the same stuff day in and day out. I'm sick of it. And ain't nobody going to fix this for him. And if I don't call him, I'm not going to make it. If I don't reach for the hymn of his garden, I'm not going to make it. If I don't tell Jesus about what I'm going through, I'm not going to make it. So right now, I'm telling you, you're stronger right now. You're wiser right now. You're better right now than you were before you got up. Because you ain't trying to go home with the same mess you came in here with. You ain't trying to deal with this another day. You ain't trying to cry another day. You ain't trying to hurt another day. Jesus, let me eat. Oh, Father. Oh, we thank you. God, you know the issues. God, you know what it is that you're doing today. You know what they stand in need of prayer for. Lord, we don't need to make a public announcement of what they stand in need of prayer for. You know about the issues. You know whether it was past, present, or future. God, you know the issues. You know how much they hurt. You know how much they cry. God, you know when we don't know that they're in the car crying, in the bathroom crying, or they go alone and they cry. You know this, God. We don't know this. Sometimes we can't bear the pain of what it is that they're going through. We can only pray, but you can bear the pain of what it is they're going through. God, they want you to do something different. They want you to heal them the way you heal that woman with the issue of blood, God. 
They want you to heal. They are reaching for the hem of your garment. They want change, God. They want peace in their life. They want to go in peace for their faith right now, God. They want you to touch them, God. They want to know when they touch you, you're going to say, who touched me? God, I thank you that today these people have came, your children, your children who have came to this culture. They want you to fix the issue. And we believe. Therefore, we receive in the mighty matchless name of Jesus that the healing process has just begun. And we thank you, God, for being the one who can do both. For my God can do it all. By faith, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.